So you're L. Ron Hubbard. It's 1950, and you just resigned from your position in the Navy. During your time in the Navy, you claimed that you saved your ship from Japanese submarines, that you destroyed the subs so thoroughly there was nothing left for them to find. You would go on telling everyone about how you received a Purple Heart and other medals for your service. In reality, US Navy investigators concluded that there were never such Japanese subs. In reality, it was just stolen valor. And now that you're out of the military, you go on to look for your next path to greatness. It's around this time that you decide to use your creativity. You were a science fiction writer, so you decide to submit an article to the Astounding Science Fiction magazine. The article was called Dianetics, a new science of the mind. Later that year, you extend the article into a full-length book, and it blows up. You originally wrote Dianetics as a pop psychology book that could help people improve their daily lives, providing techniques that could take away pain, stress, and sickness, and help develop their intelligence and memory. But plans change when you're hit with a brilliant idea. There's a lot of power in telling people how to fix their lives. It makes them want to give everything they have to you. It's almost a borderline religion. So what if you could take your book and turn it into a full-blown religion? A religion that sees you as a prophet, so you get all the attention and praise that you so desperately need, and gets you the money you need. Because after all, when you're promising people eternal afterlife salvation, the parting of a few thousand dollars is a no-brainer. That makes religion the ultimate business model if you think about it. You have the secret to curing anyone anywhere of their problems, all they have to do to get the answers is pay. And they're happy to pay. And the only way they get to find out if you're telling the truth or not, is to die. You can keep them going down this path of enlightenment for decades without ever providing any real proof, and you'll be getting money every step of the way. Since it's a religion, no one can question your actions as immoral or wrong, because it's just a part of our religious beliefs. The outside world wouldn't understand. The thing is that they, they do like, the organization does like to be put in the same sentences as, as other, you know, real churches. So that's actually a good thing because they use that as like, look, you know, we get made fun of just like everybody else. Like, you know, we're a real religion, so respect us as a real religion. And best of all, while other corporations are stuck giving away 20, 30% of their money to the tax man, you'll never have to pay a single dime of your billions to taxes. Religious organizations and churches are tax exempt in the US. It could be the greatest con that's ever been practiced on the public. That's why in 1953, what started as an article in a science fiction novel turned into the Church of Scientology, and it promised to make a positive difference in the galaxy. But when you pull back the curtain, it sheds light on something much more sinister. A multifaceted transnational corporation that has religion as only one of its many components. A business that decades later would be embroiled in murders, worker exploitation, harassment and intimidation, and much more. This is the business of Scientology. People who fall victim to Scientology usually end up feeling alone in the world, with nobody to turn to for help. But you don't have to be lured in by a religious cult to feel this way. Many of us feel alone in our regular lives. If you're watching this channel, you're probably ambitious with big goals, and to achieve those goals, you need to view yourself as an athlete. Not necessarily a physical athlete, but a mental one. Athletes have coaches, physical athletes have coaches, and yet we never think to have a mental coach, someone to help us sort through the problems we're going through in our head. In fact, if you get a mental coach, also known as a therapist, it's even looked down upon by society. But one company changing that stigma is BetterHelp, today's video sponsor. BetterHelp is the largest therapy platform in the world, with over 2 million users, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you get access to over 20,000 licensed and vetted therapists, who are available no matter where you are in the world. It's not a crisis line or self-help, it's professional therapy that's done securely online. And it's super simple to sign up. First, you give BetterHelp some information about yourself and what kind of therapy you're looking for. Then, based on your personal needs, BetterHelp matches you with a therapist who is the best fit for you. And that's it. You start communicating with your therapist in as little as 48 hours, and once you're matched, you can send them a message whenever you want. You can set up weekly video or phone calls with your therapist and avoid the awkwardness of in-person sessions. And it's way less stressful than trying to find a good therapist in your area. Plus, if you're not really feeling your therapist, it's easy and free to switch to a new one. Best of all, BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional therapy, and financial aid is available. My mental health is definitely something I'm prioritizing this year because no amount of success matters if you've got a bunch of mental issues that you haven't sorted out yet. So if you're ready to start taking control of your mental health today, visit betterhelp.com slash jaketran for 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, betterhelp.com slash jaketran for 10% off your first month. 
Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Let's get my relationship to this completely straight. So on. I am the writer of the textbooks of Scientology. In order to create a religion, you have to first understand the purpose of religion. Why do we need it? Why did it come about? Well, a long time ago, humans were left with a very important question. How do I carry myself in this world so that I survive? So we started telling tales of heroes. Heroes that would go off into the darkness, slay their enemies, and bring back food for the tribe. Heroes who wouldn't murder, heroes who wouldn't commit adultery, who wouldn't steal, etc. However, stealing, adultery, murder are pretty tempting things to do. So we needed awards and punishments for following or not following these societal norms, i.e. heaven and hell, eternal afterlife, or eternal suffering. And over time, these hero stories would keep getting passed on, they would keep iterating over and over again, they would keep getting embellished with supernatural features, until they became a fine-tuned version of how a culture wants you to carry yourself. These fine-tuned stories eventually became religions, like Christianity, Islam, etc. So whatever religion you create, a big part of it is giving people a sense of purpose, a sense of direction as to how to live their lives, the salvation they're going to get by following your rules, and the eternal suffering they'll receive if otherwise. So let's look at how Scientology approached this. The term Scientology means the study of truth. It's influenced by elements of several Western philosophies, like Christianity, along with Buddhism, Hinduism, combined with some practices from cognitive behavioral therapy. Even though L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology denounce all those things as complete BS. But that's what you want to do when you start a new religion. We already know religions like Christianity and Buddhism have a track record of working for thousands of years. So don't be arrogant, we gotta respect the giants that came before us, and why would you want to reinvent the wheel? Borrow their stories, borrow their lessons, borrow their strategies and tactics, and then just repackage it, rebrand it, make it feel like a new thing, a new opportunity. People are tired of the current religions. They've heard the pitch a thousand times. Give them something new to be excited about. When in reality, you and I both know that you just repackaged a bunch of old stuff. And there's another great thing about the business of religion. What is truth? How are you going to prove that Christianity is true, that Hinduism is true, that the Quran is true? You can't. The only thing that matters is that you make people feel that they have a purpose, that they're happy, that they're going to a better place after this life. If you achieve that, it's all fair game. Here's how Scientology approached their messaging. Scientology urges that we're not actually our body or our mind. Our bodies are just vessels. Fairly reasonable. That we're actually just spirits that occupy our current bodies, and that we go on to exist for many lifetimes. The whole purpose of being here is to advance you as a spiritual being and to make your dreams come true. Training or processing. The basic tenets of their belief is that man is an immortal spiritual being, your experience extends beyond a single lifetime, and that your capabilities are unlimited, even if not presently realized. Doesn't that just make you feel inspired by just hearing that? They did a really good job with this part. Scientology says the main pain and struggles from our past lifetimes don't just go away when we die, and they can be seriously holding us back in this lifetime. That's where Scientology can help. The negative stimuli from our past lives are called engrams. And to clear engrams, we conveniently have a series of processes that are meant to clear them out. Once you're free of all this negativity, you're open to reaching your full potential in this lifetime, whatever that means to you. As a religion maker, you create the problem and you conveniently offer the solution, paywalled behind a donation. You know the downside of our Western societies is that we have so much freedom, so much hyper-individualism that we're left feeling that we don't know what our purpose is anymore. We don't have a unified collective goal to fight for. So you want to offer that unified collective goal with your religion. Scientologists believe that they're on a crusade to save the entire planet or even the entire galaxy. The Scientology skills and knowledge are the only things keeping it all together. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist and it's something that you have to earn. And because a Scientologist does, he or she has the ability to create new and better realities and improve conditions. Uh, being Scientologist, you look at someone and you know absolutely that you can help them. On their website, Scientology says the one thing that sets them apart from other religions is proof. That you can simply apply the principles of Scientology to your life and witness the results unfold. When in reality, the principles they expound probably come from the psychology and personal development world, so of course they're going to work. And they've done very well for themselves. 
The church claims that there are over 11,000 Scientology churches, missions, and affiliate groups in 167 nations across the world, 4x more than where they were 10 years ago. However, many sources agree that this number is grossly over-exaggerated and that many think that Scientology membership has been steadily decreasing since the 90s. Whether or not they're getting more new members, one thing that continues to grow is Scientology's bank accounts. The church's estimated revenue is around half a billion dollars every single year. Tom Cruise alone has given approximately $25 million to Scientology. So how does it all work? Scientology has become a well-oiled machine, pulling in new members and keeping them loyal to the church. There are generations of families that have grown up in Scientology, with 70 Scientology buildings all over the world. Here's how the business operates. L. Ron Hubbard has written an absurd amount of books. He's actually published more books than any other author in the US, 1,084 to be exact. If there's something in your life that you're struggling with, L. Ron Hubbard has written a book to solve that problem. If you're feeling bored with your existence, if you can't stop eating junk food, if you can't get along with your parents, L. Ron Hubbard has written a book for it. And those books have been adapted into courses that you can take to fix every little thing wrong with your life. It starts off small. Scientology pinpoints your struggle, or ruin as they call it, and says, hey, we just so happen to have a course for that. All it costs is $50. And you think, what the heck? It couldn't hurt, right? When in reality, that $50 is just the hook, just the low ticket bait to get you used to giving them money. So you go through the course that's going to teach you how to have a successful marriage or make lots of money. But during the course, you find out that there are actually five other things messed up with your life. Things that you never even thought of before. But no worries. Scientology has courses for these five problems as well. All for the fair price of $5,000 each. And that's how you get caught in the process of improvements. Scientologists continue for years paying for courses over and over again. Until one day they wake up and realize that they've given the Church of Scientology half a million dollars. Once you're in Scientology, a thing called auditing becomes a big part of your life. We will begin the session now. Close your eyes. Everything that I have said to you while you're in a therapy session will be canceled and will have no force with you. Auditing is kind of like talk therapy with a little extra manipulation. The person being audited speaks with an auditor and tells them everything. I mean every little detail of this life and of the past lives you might not even remember. While a subject talks, they're connected to a device called an e-meter. You would be looking at the e-meter, you would ask me a question, and then if it reacted on the meter, then you would ask me more about that question. It's kind of like a lie detector. Many people compare it to a lie detector because it's supposed to measure your body's electrical currents. Units. Units, dude. Units of what? Units of stress. Ah, you're very, very high in, that's your, a lot of units. in your stress. The e-meter supposedly tells the auditor what questions to ask and when the subject isn't telling them everything based on these bodily changes. Every single one of these sessions is recorded and it costs an average rate of $500 an hour. And the auditing session doesn't end until the auditor says so. And members go through hundreds of these auditing sessions throughout the years. So do the math on that one. Auditing has very high margins. Every Scientologist, including children, must participate in auditing sessions. But why would they? Well, they have to if they want to reach the highest levels of the religion. You basically disclose everything that could be of a negative nature, which is the only way to reach the higher levels to become clean. So many people agree to do it. After years of participating in the Church of Scientology, you might be lucky enough to be chosen for the Sea Org. Hubbard established the Sea Org in 1967 as a group for only the most dedicated Scientologists in the world. The church claims that there are over 5,000 Sea Org members today. Children who grow up in Scientology are taught that joining the Sea Org is the most important thing they could do in their lives. Many Scientologist parents sign over custody of their kids to the Church of Scientology, just so the kids can join the Sea Org as young as 14 years old. A requirement for joining the Sea Org is signing a billion year contract. Yes, that's right, a billion years. The contract states that after death, you'll be given 21 years of leave from your Sea Org services, but you'll be expected to come back and keep serving the Sea Org in your next lifetime. So what's the big important work that members of the Sea Org are doing? Well, they're working for up to 16 hours a day doing manual labor or anything else they're told to do. If you're in the Sea Org, you work all the time. I mean, you're cleaning out garbage cans, you're sweeping floors, you're working, you know, 14, 15, 16 hours a day. And, that's and since they're volunteering for a religion, Scientology can pay these members next to nothing. One ex-Scientologist said that he made more money in the three months after leaving Scientology than he had in 15 years working for the church. 
Which brings us to yet another benefit of the business of religion, slave labor. All the auditing and work for the Sea Org gets you to higher levels of Scientology. Each one brings you closer to the bridge of total freedom, the utmost goal for Scientologists. But it can take many years and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to reach this mystical point of enlightenment. Scientology claims that once you reach this level, you can become an operating thetan, or OT. OTs can allegedly move objects with their mind, control people's behavior, and communicate telepathically. Enough! I was 21 years old, living in London, Ontario, Canada. I wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. And someone had told me about what they called, who said there's this cult in New York called Scientology, which I'd never heard of. And if you give them all your money, they'll make anything possible in your life. Every single product and service that Scientology provides costs money. It's actually blatantly stated by L. Ron Hubbard that everything in the religion should come at a price. Sure, other major religions may ask their members for donations, but you'll be hard pressed to find another one that requires its members to pay thousands of dollars to be considered a good Scientologist. Leah Remini said that the 12 basic books of Scientology cost around $4,000. They're updated often, so members must keep buying the new books. Your reactive mind is the cause of what's wrong in your life. But with Dianetics, you're going to learn how to get rid of it. Scientology took a page out of the education industrial complex. Before you can reach the bridge of total freedom, there are hundreds of courses that you need to take that cost around $650 each. The Hubbard College of Scientology Qualifications Division Department of Certifications and Awards does hereby certify that Anthony A. Phillips has attained the state of clear. Michelle Leclerc, another ex-member, said that she gave $5 million to Scientology over the years. Plus, Scientology pays a 10% commission to anyone who can bring in new recruits. So if you bring in five new people, you'll get a cut of all the money they give to Scientology. And you gotta give the guys at the church some credit here. Not only did they borrow from other religions, cognitive behavioral therapy, the education business, the self-help business, but they also borrowed from the very profitable multi-level marketing business. That is true innovation. And since you just lose money if you sit on billions of dollars in cash, thanks to inflation, the Church of Scientology also borrowed the page out of the Catholic Church's book and poured that cash into real estate. The church owes approximately 12 million square feet of property around the world. Scientology has become a fundraising and real estate empire rather than a spiritual religious empire. In addition to the revenue, Scientology also has low expenses thanks to the exploits of free labor. Many Scientologists, like those in the Sea Org, work for free for decades. The max I got paid you know, on a weekly basis was 50 bucks. Sea Org workers take home something between six and 40 cents an hour. So if you've got very low labor costs, no taxes to pay, and wealthy people giving you donations, you can see why Scientology has amassed huge piles of money. The only thing Scientology ever pays for are legal protection, private investigators, and the cost of harassing ex-members. They hire private detectives to harass people. I have been sued twice. Financial ruin. Years of harassment. Their homes broken into, have them beaten. We chased her around, we followed her to the airport. Gotten hold of personal phone records. Slashed their tires, break their car windows. I was locked in a chicken wire cage. In fact, the church's biggest expense is scaring ex-members into keeping their mouths shut about Scientology. In 1957, the IRS revoked Scientology's tax-exempt status because it was determined that Scientology was a commercial organization. The church spent the next 25 years playing dirty to fight back. An investigation by the New York Times discovered that Scientology had actually orchestrated a plot to destroy the lives of individual IRS employees. Scientology's lawyers hired private investigators to dig into the private lives of IRS officials and basically stalked them to uncover potential vulnerabilities. The church even financed an organization of IRS whistleblowers that attacked the agency publicly. Eventually, the IRS had had enough. 
and the commissioner agreed to negotiate with the church. Can you imagine the IRS agreeing to negotiate with you about paying your taxes? Yeah, me neither. They came to an agreement, and the Church of Scientology was granted religious recognition and tax-exempt status by the IRS in 1993. I mean, considering that Scientology makes around $500 million a year, that's over $100 million they'd be losing to taxes. And Scientology successfully bullied the IRS into not paying them. Scientology would do anything to hold onto its tax-exempt status, including suing, harassing, stalking, and slander, and even making someone disappear if that's what it takes. I knew they had their goons around. And then the guy rolls down his window and I saw the truck and he starts filming and I go, okay, this is not good. What's going on? Oh, we're just doing a documentary. That was a private investigator who's been following us all night long. The Church of Scientology is known for intimidating former members who leave the church. You hear stories about people leaving Scientology and you hear about them coming to your house and scaring you and or, you know, threatening you. For current members of the church, discipline comes in the form of physical punishment, usually from the church's leader, David Miscavige. You are missing the signpost up ahead. The one that reads, next stop, infinity. Many ex-Scientologists have horrible stories about David beating people. We'd be in meetings and he would punch people in the meeting. On two occasions, David Miscavige struck me, and one of the last uh, occasions was in the 2000s. It was shortly before I left, and uh, he punched me, and he, he basically, I had glasses at the time, he punched me so hard in the face that my glasses broke. Did David Miscavige ever beat you? Many, many, times. many, many times. And we, did you witness him beat others? Many, many, many times. Scientology also has big consequences in store for people who dare cross them, and there are no limits to the extent they'll punish someone who betrays them. I don't know other churches that demand to destroy people's lives if they leave and speak out publicly against it. I don't know real churches who demand families to break apart if one feels uh, that they should leave. Like Michelle Leclerc. Michelle was a member of Scientology for 21 years. She was married to a man and raised four children in the church. But then when she came terms with the fact that she was a lesbian, the church made her life a nightmare. Every time I tried to reach out to the church, my thoughts of women and my confession um, of homosexuality was used against me. She tried to get a divorce and leave Scientology four separate times, but they kept telling her to pay for more courses and do more work on her marriage. But it wasn't until she threatened to stop giving the church money that they finally let her file for divorce. I said, if you do not get me out of session and start this divorce immediately, you will not get another dime from me. And the next day I was in the chaplain's office with a lawyer on the phone writing up our divorce agreement. But they weren't just going to let her leave. They told the California Department of Corporations that Michelle was operating a Ponzi scheme. She ended up being indicted and paying back $1.2 million. Now, whenever Michelle speaks up about Scientology, they can just say, oh, don't listen to her, she's a felon. But Michelle claims that the Church of Scientology set her up to take the fall. After members leave the church, they're labeled as suppressive people. Their families are forced to stop communicating with them. They become completely isolated to everyone they were close to. But still, other members don't even get a chance to escape Scientology. Like Shelley Miscavige, the wife of Scientology's leader, David Miscavige. Shelley and David met in the Sea Org. For years, they were the power couple of Scientology until one day she just disappeared without a trace. Shelly has now been missing for the past 15 years. Some speculate that she's dead. Others think she's being held captive by David in the mountains of Los Angeles for all these years. Do you think he has the ability, the will to order his wife be locked away? Absolutely, there's no question about it. It's believed that Shelly is being punished because she defied David by using a new system with his staff while he was out of town. People who ask about Shelly are always met with aggression. Coming here and making it seem dark and mysterious, that, all that does is you create threats against us. Very innocent people. Why Lovely do you come like here? As often as Why do like you, you contact you. media relations? We will. We will. Look. When her friend Leah Remini dared to ask about her whereabouts, she was forced to undergo intense auditing for four months, and she wasn't allowed to leave until they were satisfied. Leah paid three hundred thousand dollars for the privilege. Who is this guy?
What's that guy doing? With the phone, right? Yep. Yeah, look at look at how they're like pointing they this way. They both have their phones pointed, pointed this, this way. way. I got the guy with his phone. Scientology denies Shelly is even missing. To this day, nobody has heard from or seen Shelly Miscavige since 2007, and David continues to run the Church of Scientology with an iron fist. So out of all the things that I've covered, Scientology actually actively goes after people that criticizes them, with the other one being Russia, who also goes after people who criticize them. So depending on whether or not you're seeing this video publicly or in the private documentary section will be what decision I made. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're seeing this video publicly, click the join button below for other documentaries that are too controversial to be posted publicly. You can follow me on Instagram at jaketrain.io, spelled exactly like that. Please watch out for fake accounts. I am not gonna message you asking for money. That's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching. Stay out there and I will see you guys in the next one.